So you moved to Texas. Um, yes. And presently, you work in a certain in a certain industry. Yes, I do. That a lot of people might not uh, know about or have vague understanding about. So, mm-hmm. talk to us a little bit about that and what you do, according to what you're able to share. You know, if okay. there's something you can't share, feel free yeah. not to share. So, yeah. So when I originally moved down here, I worked for a specific uh, foster care agency out of Fort Worth. Um, I was there for a little over a year as a case manager. Um, and then October of last year, I transferred to another foster care agency, um, called Upbring. So I'm a family service worker, which is essentially the same thing as a case manager. Um, so I've been in foster care a little over two years. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What drew you to that? Like, was it something where you enjoyed that kind of stuff your whole life or later in life? Um, it's weird. Cause I always tell the story how I was a psychology major. You were too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you studied the brain. Why do you think I'm so good with people? And every, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chase. I studied psychology um, at Iowa State, and I originally went to go in animal science pre vet. Mm. Thought I wanted to go to vet school since I was like 12. Um, I thought it was because I didn't like people. Like if I worked with animals, I wouldn't have to deal with people. And then I realized about sophomore year that oh, I actually enjoy working with people, and mm. I like talking to people, and so I. Went the route of psychology and dropped the pre-vet option. Um, thought I wanted to work with therapy animals with people. Then I ended up dropping that as a whole. Um, thought I wanted to be a counselor. And then when I graduated, I looked at grad programs. Thought I wanted to go into counseling psych. Thought I wanted to be a therapist. Um, you know, grad school is expensive. So I took a year off. Tried to figure out a little bit more what I wanted to do. Um, in college, I actually worked at a residential facility for juveniles who had, you know, criminal court history, um, did that for about three years. Um, really amazing experience. I love working with teens, like adolescents, teens is my main focus. I love working with kids in general, but, um, I think it's a really important age. And then knew someone who knew someone and they worked in the foster care industry and I had only tested the waters a little bit in foster care because the kids who are in the residential facility, some of them, I mean, essentially they're in foster care while they're away from home at the residential facility. Um, But yeah, so when I moved down here, it was kind of all new. Had never worked with, you know, children outside of like 12 to 18 besides like babysitting and stuff. But so, yeah. Mm. So what does that look like for, um, because I'm not going to assume everybody knows. Yeah. Um, So what is foster care or being a foster parent versus how does that translate to maybe, you know, even adoption or just like all those words that some of us might not be too familiar with? Like, could you kind of explain or go into that a little bit more? Yeah. So essentially I only know what foster care is in the state of Texas. Foster care is different state to state Mm -hmm. as far as kind of what they're, I mean, everyone has like a basis of what they go off of, but in Texas specifically, um, I mean, if you want to say you're a parent, whether you're married or single and you want to adopt a child, um, you could go the straight adopt route. So that means that you are um, looking for children who are legally free, which means that they have their parents' rights have been terminated. Um, Or if you would like to adopt through foster care, which I always encourage people, um, then you can go that route. Um, With adoption while waiting for just legal risk or legally free kids. Um, Definitely a longer time period, um, especially depending on what age of kids that you want. You find a lot of people that, you know, want babies and, you know, younger children, and there are a lot of other children and other ages that are available. And the average age of actually, like, kids in foster care in general is around eight years old. Um, But if you adopt through foster care, there's... I am a little biased. I think that if you are planning to adopt, adopting through foster care is an incredible experience. Um, But, you know, it's up to everyone's preference. And getting licensed as a foster parent is a whole thing. And I don't know if you want to get into that, but I could. (laughs) Yeah. Like, what what would you say, um, like, what are some of the benefits of adopting through um, foster care versus going another route? Um, As far as, like, kind of what the benefits that, children receive, um, you know, the insurance and the resources, 
Um, when a child comes into foster care, they have a ton of eyes on them, which can be looked at as good or bad. Um, but they essentially have all of their needs met and more if they're in foster care. Um, as far as the adoption process, I mean, adopting through foster care is essentially free. Um, you don't have to hire your own attorney. You don't have to pay like those court fees and lawyer fees and that kind of stuff versus what you would if you did straight adopt. Um, and again, that's everyone's preference too. I know multiple people who have done straight adopt and had great experience with it. It just all kind of depends on what you're called to do.